Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everybody welcome to the class are you all ready for more Japanese today well we'll do a lot of things today with the help of what we have done in our previous classes last time we did imas and arimas that is to show existence of living and non-living things so well with the help of that we will do something new in this class and also learn new kanjis and new expressions. So well, first of all, let me tell you about this greeting that I keep using all the time, konnichiwa. This is a simple expression, a simple greeting, which means hello in Japanese. And you can use it anytime you want, but not in the evening. It is a daytime greeting around 11, 10 in the morning till five or maybe till sunset you can say konnichiwa to anybody you meet anywhere you meet so you have two people here each of them is saying konnichiwa now before we actually start doing as i had said earlier something new in japanese well we will go back to our assignments do the assignments and see you can check your assignments to see what you have done is correct or not well, this is your assignment one and you can see a lot of people standing over here. It's a family picture, photograph and you have children, you have ladies, you have male members, gents standing at the back. So, well, let us see what the exercise is. Nan nin imaska. So, we have to count people. We have to tell how many people are there in the picture? So the first one, the question is, na nin imasu ka? Nin is the counter for people. So let us see how many are there. You can count, I am sure. And ju ni nin imasu. So there are 12 people in the picture. And then we have the second one, otoko no ko wa? Nanin imasu ka? And the answer to that is Hitori imasu. And we are only talking over here of Otoko no ko, which is a boy. Onna no ko, girls. Onna no hito, ladies. And Otoko no hito males. So we are trying to be very specific and na nin imasu ka? How many people are there? So please try to answer. Then you have onna no ko wa na nin imasu ka? So you have two girls over here. Futari imasu. If you remember we have done hitori futari Sanin, Yonin, Gonin, Rokunin, Nananin, Hachinin, Kyunin, Junin, Juichinin, and so on for counting people. So you can practice that over here. Onna no hito wa nanin desu ka? You have these ladies standing over here. Onna no hito wa nanin desu ka? Let us see how many are there. Hai, Yonin imas. And please remember over here it is. Yonin and not yon nin, as I told you earlier as well. It is yonin, yo, and not yon. Please remember that, that is very, very essential. And then we have in the end another question for you. Otoko no hito wa nan nin desu ka? 
and well the answer is gonin imas hitori futari sanin yonin gon gonin imas i hope you got it all right now we go on to the next assignment practice saying sai which is age so you have this photograph here and you have a lot of people you can see here their age is given and you have to ask how old they are well this is tanaka san ok san musume san musuko san and oyome san akachan so you have these people over here of tanaka san's family you can ask tanaka san wa nan sai desu ka in the beginning and then you can go on to ask how old his wife is ok san wa nan sai desu ka musume san wa nan sai desu ka oyome san wa nan sai desu ka aka chan wa nan sai desu ka musuko san wa nan sai desu ka and so on all the words are given over here for you you can see and ask your partner practice like this your age and all this vocabulary now we also did last time locational nouns if you remember how to tell where a certain thing is where a certain place is whether it is on something next to something under something inside something outside a certain place so well practice your locational nouns here the questions are like this ginko wa doko ni arimasu ka so ginko is over here ginko wa doko ni arimasu ka you can also say ginko wa doko desu ka arimasu shows existence of non living things so well you can practice that and then your answer could be ginko wa restaurant no mai ni arimasu so this is the restaurant or the cafeteria ginko where is the ginko ginko is in front of the cafeteria so well ginko wa restaurant no mai ni arimasu or you could also say ginko wa yubin kyoku no tonari ni arimasu instead of ginko you can also use some other noun over here another place you can say and you can talk about that you can ask about that so well let us see restaurant wa supa no tonari ni arimasu restaurant wa doko ni arimasu ka question and then answer is restaurant wa supa no tonari ni arimasu this is a supermarket so well restaurant wa supermarket no tonari ni arimasu so you can practice like this practice your locational nouns and the vocabulary that we have done in our previous lessons now we have match group a with group b we have been doing this all through so well let us see what it is kokuban like board koen futsuka second futari two people gochiso sama thanks for the food asobimas play oyogimas swim ginko bank kyoshitsu classroom ushiro back or behind and we have in the end soba which is nearby gochiso sama as you can see we did last time this is an expression used after having had food thank you god for all the good food that you have given me
So, this is just an expression, we will try to remember that. It is nice to know these expressions because if you are there in Japan or with Japanese people, it is always nice to use their expressions that somehow makes things very easy and convenient. Write the readings of the characters given below in hiragana. Now, we have done quite a few things in in uh, the previous lessons and it is actually very important to learn hiragana as well because this is a new script. Uh, we are doing it in Roman over here, but it is essential for us to be able to write what we are doing in hiragana and kanji. So, these things are very, very important with conversation with what we are doing now with grammar, with conversation, hiragana is also essential. So, please practice this at home and try to write it. So, well, we have the first one is okane, ooki, shita, junin, juichi, Mizu Kayobi Gogatsu Hon Ichinichi Ju and please practice this, write it again and again so that the words come out very, very nicely. Then, we also did last time, nan nin imasu ka, how many people are present. So, well, look at this picture and see how many people are present over here. How many do you see? Well, two people are present. So, what will the answer be? We just did hitori futari. So, well, nan nin imasu ka, futari so, there are two people over here. But now, when you look at this picture, what do you see? There is no one. So, what should the answer be? Nan nin imasu ka? It could be zero people. It could be zero nin imasu. Okay? But that is not used at all. There is a better way of saying it, which is dare mo imasen. Now, this word, question word, dare. We have done. Dare is a question word which means who. And if you add more to it, dare mo is equal to no one or nobody. Nobody is present. So, nan nin imasu ka, dare mo imasen. Nobody is present. Now, as I had promised, we are going to do something new today. We are going to learn new kanjis and also how to ask politely someone to do something for you or to invite people over. So, well, invite them to do something with you. So, well, picnic A, ikimasho. That is what we are going to do. Before that, Listen to this radio conversation and let us see how much you have understood and then I will explain. Moshi moshi. Moshi moshi. Arun san, konnichiwa Rao desu. Konnichiwa Rao san, o genki desu ka? O kage sama de genki desu. Arun san, ashita yasumi desu ne. Hai, so desu. Nani wo shimasu ka? Nani mo shimasen. Ja, krabu e ikimasen ka? Sore wa ii desu ne. Ja, ashita hachiji wa dou desu ka? Hachiji wa daijoubu desu. Kuruma de ikimasu ka? Ii e, densha de ikimashou. So, well, did you understand something? I am sure quite a bit of it is understood by you by now. Well, I will read it once for you and explain as well. This is conversation between two people, Futari no Kaiwa, Rao-san and 
Arun san. So, well, I'll just read it out to you. Moshi moshi, moshi moshi. Arun san, konnichiwa, Rao desu. Konnichiwa, Rao san, o genki desu ka? O kage sama de genki desu. Arun san, ashita yasumi desu ne? Hai, so desu. Nani o shimasu ka? Nani mo shimasen. Ja, club e ikimasen ka? Sore wa ii desu ne. Ja, ashita hachiji wa dou desu ka? Hachiji wa daijoubu desu. Kuruma de ikimasu ka? Ii e, densha de ikimashou. So, a simple conversation between Rao san and Arun san. On the phone, moshi moshi. Arun san konnichi wa, of course you understand. The new phrase is o genki desu ka? Well, are you in good health, in good shape, you are keeping well? O kage sama de genki desu. Thank you very much, I am alright. Arun san, ashita yasumi desu ne? Tomorrow is a holiday. Hai, so desu. Nani o shimasu ka? What are you going to do tomorrow? Nani mo shimasen, nothing. Ja, kurabe ikimasen ka? Well, let's go to the club. Sore wa ii desu ne? That is really, really nice, that's very good. Ja, ashita hachiji wa dou desu ka? Dou desu ka is another phrase. How about tomorrow at 8 o'clock? Hachiji wa daijobu desu. Daijobu is, well, it's alright at 8 o'clock. Kuruma de ikimasu ka? Are we going by car? No, let's take the train. So now I'll explain all of this to you in detail. This is in the script. You can see how it is written and go through it. Learn all the hiragana, how to write the hiragana. And this is the translation of what is there in Roman for you. But I would like to tell you one thing that this translation is not a literal translation of what is actually there because if you try to translate it then the meaning changes. So, this is what you would say in English. So, please keep that in mind when you are going through this translation. Well, now the first word over there was moshi moshi. When you talk to people on phone you would say hello as moshi moshi. Please remember that is a telephone expression and not hello as in hi, how are you, moshi moshi, how are you. No, that is not done. Moshi moshi is to be used only on phone for hello. So, well, both of these people can say moshi moshi, moshi moshi as was there in the conversation like this. Then, we have these two people, if you are talking informally to someone, you just ring up your friend or you ring up someone at home, what would you do? Moshi moshi is of course you have just done, moshi moshi is what you would say first and then what would you say? Well, I am Arun, watashi wa Arun desu or just Arun desu as in this conversation over here and then konnichiwa and the other person will also tell his name and konnichiwa or konnichiwa and name as is given over here. So, this is a very very informal way of talking on phone, but there are there are situations there are places where you have to be very formal. For example, if you if you um, if you call your friend at home and you want to know whether your friend is at home or not or maybe you call your friend in office and you want to inquire as to your friend is there in office or not. What would you say? How would you inquire? How would you talk on the phone then? Well, there is a different way that is a formal way of talking and you would say moshi moshi of course and then arun to moshimasu. Watashi wa arun desu is what we did last time. Over here Arun to moshimasu, I am Arun. Moshimasu is a polite way of saying I am Arun. And why polite? Because you are talking to someone else and not to a friend on the phone in office. And then 
your maybe your friend is Mariko or Rao or Neha, whosoever, Tanaka san, anybody. Mariko san irashaimasu ka? Irashaimasu is polite for imasu ka? So, whenever you are talking formally like this, inquiring about someone on phone, you would generally say the name of the person and then irashai maska instead of imaska. Imaska would be very, very informal. And then the answer would be well, if the person is Mariko san, whom you want to talk to, Mariko san would say, Konnichiwa, Mariko desu. If it is not Mariko san and someone else, there is a different way of saying which we will do later. Now, you have met Mariko san, you have said I am Arun, Mariko san has said I am Mariko and then what should be the next question? What should you ask next or what should you say next? Well, ogenki desu ka? Ogenki desu ka is a phrase as was there in, a, in the conversation also and it means how are you? Literal translation would be are you in good health? So, in English it would be how are you? And what is the answer to that? Another phrase over here, okage sama de genki desu. Okage sama de genki desu means thank you, I am in good health, I am all right. Thank you very much. And you could also ask the same question, Arun san wa genki desu ka? Arun san wa o genki desu ka? And Arun san could say, hai okage sama de genki desu. Now, one thing you will notice over here, which is when you are asking someone, you say A san wa o genki desu ka and the answer is hai okage sama de okage sama de genki this and not o genki this. O genki is to be used for someone and genki is to be used for oneself. O is honorific. So, this O as we did earlier with O namai is going to be used a number of times later. So, please for your family members, for yourself, for friends who are very, very informal with you, generally O is not used and O is used in formal situations and never for oneself. As we did namai, so o namai wa nan desu ka? Atashi no namai wa whatever your name. So, please o is not to be used for oneself. Now, we just now did o genki desu ka as a phrase inquiring about someone. How are you? Well, there is another another uh, meaning to ogenki desu ka. Actually, you could ask someone if someone as is in the slide, you can ask someone if they are they are actually sick or as is given over here, this gentleman is with a plaster. So, ogenki desu ka? Are you all right now? How are you feeling now? And the answer could be anything actually over here. Let us see what the answer is. Daijobu desu. Now, this is another phrase. Daijobu desu means I am all right. Just a simple informal I am ok. I am all right now. So, these are some of the usages, different ways of using these phrases, different situations where you can use these phrases. Now, in our previous lessons, we have done the mass form of verbs. If you remember, we have done mas, masen, mashita and masen deshita. So, over here, for example, if you say, ta 
tabemasu. So if you say watashi wa tabemasu, it means I eat or I will eat. If you say watashi wa tabemasen, means I will not eat or I do not eat, any of these. But now over here, I want to use something different. Watashi wa tabemasen, I do not eat or I will not eat. But now I put a ka over here, which is a question particle, makes this sentence into a question form, question statement. Watashi wa tabemasu. Anata wa tabemasen ka? If I use this with a rising intonation, then it has a different meaning. It means, won't you eat this please? Anata wa over here, something, something could be any noun. Ringo, keki. Anata wa ringo o tabemasen ka? Won't you eat this apple? Won't you eat an apple? Or anata wa keki o tabemasen ka? Won't you eat this cake please? Or as is given over here, issho ni gohan o tabemasen ka? Won't you have food with us? Issho ni Delhi e ikimasen ka? Won't you come with us to Delhi? So please remember with masen, if you put this ka with a rising intonation, it has a meaning which is used as a polite invitation as is given over here. And also when you want someone to do something for you, it is a polite way of asking people to do something for you and not a negative please remember that. Though the negative is there, but with ka it changes meaning completely. So now we will practice this over here. Practice the dialogue with masen ka and different time expressions as is given over here for you. There is a small dialogue, I will just read it out. Ashita yasumi desu, golfo no renchi wo shimasen ka? I desu ne. Ashita gozen kuji wa dou desu ka? Daijoubu desu. So well you can replace ashita over here with any of these time expressions and golf no renchu is practice, renchu is practice, so golf practice. Oshimasen ka? Will you please do golf practice tomorrow? Ashita wa yasumi desu, tomorrow is a holiday. So, won't you please do golf practice and with me is understood from the conversation. So, you have tennis, yamanobori, yamanobori is mountain climbing, ryoko is actually tourism or a trip, going on a vacation, then ega is films or movies, yachting is you go sailing somewhere and bijitsukan is a museum. So well, won't you do these things with me? So you can replace golf no renshu with any of these over here and ashita with any of these time expressions over here and practice with your partner and answer. Of course, time is also over here. You, you can put different times also and practice. Now, this was how to invite people over, how to ask people to do certain things for you, request people in a polite way to do something for you. Now, as you can see over here and also in the conversation, there was this masho form, 
which was given. So, well, this musho form of verb is simple to make musho over here, verb in musho form, verb plus musho. Now, how do you make it first thing? We have ikimas, yomimas, all you need to do is just remove the mas form from here and put masho instead. Ikimas means go or will go, yomimas means read or will read, nomimas means drink or will drink. But the moment you remove mas from here and put masho over here, it means ikimasho means let us go. Yomi masho means let us read and nomi masho means let us drink. Now, when you say let us do a certain activity, what exactly are you doing? Well, you are actually including yourself in the conversation. You are deciding for the person that let us do a certain thing. You are not asking the person. You are simply deciding let us do whatever the verb says. Over here, ikimasho, let us go. Ginko e ikimasho, let us go to the bank. So, when you say let us go to the bank, do you, do you actually ask the person, shall we go? No, you just decide for the person and you say, just let us go to the, go or do whatever the verb is asking us. So, with masho form, you include yourself in the conversation and also decide for the listener, whatever the verb is wanting you to do. Now, look at the pictures and say, let us do whatever the verb is saying and use masho form. Look at this picture over here. Let us see what they are doing. They are in the cafeteria. So, before that, cafeteria A ikimasho, place A ikimasho. Then the second one is, look at this picture. This gentleman is eating. So, before that, gohan o tabemasho, gohan is food and gohan is also cooked rice. So, gohan o tabemasho. Then the third one is kuruma, kuruma de ikimasho. So, let us go by kuruma. Now, over here you can see we are using three different particles, place a ikimasho. So, we are using a something o tabe masho. So, we are using particle o and something de by means of iki masho. So, let us use a certain means of transport and go somewhere. So, we are using three different particles over here and you can practice all these with your partner using different, different verbs, different nouns with these particles. Now, over here you can ask your friend, doko e ikimasu ka or doko e ikimashou ka. Both can be used. In the first one you are actually asking the person where, where should we go? And in the second one, you ask, doko e ikimashou ka? Where should we go? Let us go somewhere. Doko e ikimashou ka? Let us go somewhere or where shall we go? The answer could be, so this ne or so ne as is given over here. The pato e ikimashou. So, any place e ikimashou. 
over here the place names are given Bijutsukan Art Museum Tenrankai Exhibition Boring the bowling uh, stadiums that you have, bowling places you have where you can go and practice bowling and then Pur, Pur is swimming pool. Then you have Yakyu no Renshu, Yakyu is baseball, practice baseball, cafeteria of course you all know. So, you can go to any of these places, you have to use particle A and Iki Masho with particle A. So, doko e ikimasu ka or doko e ikimashou ka, bijutsu kan e ikimashou, tenrankai e ikimashou, boring e ikimashou and so on. So, you can practice this small conversation with your friends. Now, we did particle ne also in the conversation, particle ne. Now, particle ne like particle ka always comes in the end, at the end of a sentence, it is an it is a sentence ending particle. With ka you are asking a question actually, you are asking a direct question, but with ne there is a slight difference, it is confirmation of what you are saying. So, you want the listener to confirm to what you are saying. You already know what you are saying is correct. You have knowledge of what you are saying. You just want your listener, your partner to confirm to what you are saying. So, thus it is used in the end over here. It means right, do not you agree? Is not it in English? It is quite similar to that. So, well, anata wa gakusei desu ne. So, I already know that you are a student. I am only confirming as is given over here, anata wa gakusei desu ne, aren't you a student with a rising intonation. Tanaka san no kuruma desu ne. So, I have a faint idea that it is your car, I know that it is your car, I have some knowledge of it and thus I am putting ne over here. If I have no knowledge of it, then I would say ka, tanaka san no kuruma desu ka and it would be a direct question. So, with ne you can with a rising intonation you can ask and confirm from your partner about what you are saying. Now, listen to this radio conversation and then we will do something new. Ashita kara shuchyo desu ka? Hai, so desu. Doko e ikimasu ka? Mumbai e ikimasu. Itsu mo dorimasu ka? Raigetsu no muika desu. Ah. Watashi wa muika ni kuni e kaerimasu. So shite gogatsu no futsuka ni modorimasu. Ah, so. Well, most of it is understood. I will just read it out. Rao san and Amit san. Ashita kara shuchyo desu ka? Hai, so desu. Doko e ikimasu ka? Mumbai e ikimasu. いつもどりますか。来月の六日です。ああ、私は六日に国へ帰ります。そして五月の二日に戻ります。あ、そう。So just a simple conversation between two people, and over here we have a new word, which is kara. We have done kara in our previous chapters. Earlier, Hachiji kara kuji made, Shichiji kara juji made for time. Over here, it is for time expressions. Ashita kara from tomorrow. So, with time expressions also, you can use kara. And then, Hai so des doko e ikimasu ka? Where are you going? Mumbai e ikimasu. Itsu modorimasu ka? Itsu means when. We have done this itsu earlier. And modorimasu is a new word which means to return. So, you go out somewhere, you are staying somewhere, you just go out somewhere for a short while and then come back is modorimasu ka. Raigetsu no muika desu, 6th of next month. 
あ、私は6日に国へ帰ります。Well、I'm but surprisingly it's a little different from the English and. In English and joins two sentences without a full stop but in Japanese the conjunction begins a sentence as you can see over here after a full stop a new sentence is using soshite as the first word even though it joins two sentences. So well with soshite we have Sentence 1, full stop, so shite, sentence 2, unlike the English and. You can see in the example over here, kyo gakko e ikimashita, so shite, sensei ni aimashita. I went to school today and met the teacher and over here you can see soshite is starting a sentence. In a similar manner, kino wa asa tennis no renshi wo shimashita, soshite go cricket o shimashita. Yesterday I practiced tennis in the morning and then played cricket in the afternoon. So well you can see the difference in soshite and and. And this is again in the script. You can practice your kanji characters. Some new kanjis are there. And this is the translation of what is there in Roman for you. And now as we always do, we will do kanji. I have been telling you a lot about kanji all these in these previous lessons and also I have talked once about the book that I was using. Well, there is another book that I am using over here for kanji which is a very good book and you can all refer to that book sometime. The book is called Kanji and Kana, a handbook and dictionary of the Japanese writing systems by Wolfgang Hadamitsky and Mark Spahn. And this is a very good book. It has about 1900 kanji characters with stroke order, with meaning, with new words and I am using this book. You could, you could also use this, you know the name of the book now, you could look it up and actually refer to this book for any, any detail on kanji. It is a very detailed book and gives lot of information. Now we have some new, new kanji words for you over here. These words you have just done in this class. One is ashita. If you remember we did this kanji character nichi and we also did this kanji character ski. So nichi and ski together make one character and again nichi over here make it ashita. So please, ashita. Now there is a reason for doing this. There are certain words which you should remember as words only and not just as simple kanji characters. They are written together, done together and easy to recognize. So these are some words over here. You have also done ima means now and nichi again. Imanichi now meaning today. This is he day. Ima means now, now, day, today. So this means kyo. Today is kyo. Kyo today. Then we have kino. There is another word given over here. Again, nichi over here together 
and Nichi again means Hino yesterday. So these are three characters which you must know Ashita, Kyo, Kino or Kino, Kyo, Ashita. These are given over here tomorrow, today and yesterday. Now we have some simple kanji for you. This is interesting. When you look at this character, what does it remind you of? Can you guess what it is, all of you? You think what it could be? Well, this character is this over here. This means kuchi. Kuchi means mouth and I will show you the slide also. Mouth is like this. Well, my drawing is not good. So, well, you have to show it in, in <laughs> lines like this in lines and it will come like this 1, 2 and 3. So, it is a 3 stroke character kuchi as is given over here mouth and then we have simple kanji me. Me is eyes as you can see and if you look at eyes it is like this. So, well just turn it and try to show it in lines and this is how it is going to come me. So, when you look at this character it will always remind you of eyes like this. So, please remember that. These are some of the simpler kanjis which you can actually visualize and see, but they do become very difficult also and difficult to understand sometimes. Well, now if you look at this slide over here, kuchi, you can see and this is the stroke order of the character. So, you have 1, you have 2 and then you join it like this and all your kanji characters should end in the lower right corner of the block always. It is easy to go to the next character after that. And then we have me as I told you just now, just turn it and you will get me. Now, the stroke order is 1, 2, 3, 4 and then you have the last line which is 5 going in the end of the lower end of the block. So, this is how may is to be done. Now, from today we will also do hiragana as that is also very, very important and integral part of the language. So, I will try to first draw the hiragana characters for you, make them over here for you and then we will do it on the slide. A. Ah. E. U. A. O. So, please try to make them at home. The stroke order is given over here. You can look at the stroke order and draw it in exactly this manner. There will be times when maybe my stroke order is not as it should be. So, I do not want you to learn it the wrong way. Please look at the stroke order and learn it as it is given over here. Uh, E U A O. So, the stroke order is very clearly given. Please practice in this manner at home. A, E, U, A and O. All of it is here for you. You can see it at one glance and practice.
there are some words with kanji characters. You can use them in your conversation, you can use to make sentences. You can learn these words, they are important, they are interesting kanjis over here, easy to memorize. So, try to learn them. Jinko, Jinko, Iriguchi. The meanings are given over here, you can please go through the meanings. Deguchi, Hitome, Akarui, Imagoro, Kotoshi, Kongetsu, Suitachi. So, these are some new kanji characters. Words you have already done, most of them, but the kanjis are new, so you can remember those. This is vocabulary that we are using in the lesson. Yamanobori and the meanings are given here. Yamanobori. Ryoko. Eiga. Natsu yasumi. Yotting. Shumatsu. Bijutsukan. Boring, pool, modorimas, renshu, and now of course your work begins. You have to do all this at home. Whatever you have done today, you need to practice with your uh, partner or practice loudly at home, so that you can remember and not forget what we have done. These are some dates given from a calendar. You can look up any calendar for that matter and practice with your partner by inviting them to do various things during summer vacations or during holidays or any time during the week. Over here lot of things are given, you can practice that with your partner. Then we have a small radio conversation. Listen to the radio conversation. Arun san, mai nichi nanji kan benkyo shimasu ka? So desu ne. Asa rokuji kara kuji made desu. Ban wa benkyo shimasen ka? Iie, goji kara hachiji made shimasu. So desu ka. Ja mai nichi rokuji kan benkyo shimasu ne. So desu. Listen to the conversation and answer the questions given here. Now there is another assignment which is basically kanji characters are given over here and you have to choose the correct reading for the kanji characters. And match the kanji characters in column A with readings in column B, which I am sure you are used to by now. And do it properly and whatever, whatever you are unable to do, well, we will try to do it in our next lesson, next time. Till then, mata aimashou. I keep using this all the time in class. You can use this phrase after you finish class to anyone, to the students. You can also, you can also use this phrase when you are parting in office, mata aimashou, if you are going to meet the person tomorrow or uh, you can also say that to a friend anywhere, you are going to meet the person after a while, 
mata aimasho. Let us meet later some time. That is what it means. So, well, minasan, mata aimasho, kore de owarimasu. Arigato. Thank you very much.